Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag today. It was created by Read Like Wildfire and Earl Grey Books, and there are 15 total prompts in this. And this is perfect timing for this because I wanted to do something for mid-year to kind of show you guys where I'm at with my reading, and I'm going to kind of incorporate that into these prompts as well. So let's get started. Number one, the big one, what's your best book read so far for 2017? And I kind of went over Goodreads and saw some of the books I have gone through, and the one that stands out the most for me is The Explorer's Guild by John Baird and Kevin Costner. It's just such a unique adventure, kind of globe-spanning. It's a bit mystery, action-adventure, a little bit of sci-fi thrown in with very fascinating characters. Uh, this is volume one called The Passage of Shambhala. I'm definitely hoping that this is volume one, that there will be sequels, and that I won't have too long of a wait. But this was just awesome, awesome story. And a unique combination of sort of text and graphic novels. Absolutely love this one. Number two, what's the best sequel so far? And I haven't really read a lot of sequels, um, but the one that stands out the most is The Burning World by Isaac Marion. And this is the sequel to Warm Bodies, a story of R, a zombie who is sort of slowly coming back to life, uh, kind of reconnecting with his humanity. The prose in this is just fantastic. Uh, just to give you a little synopsis, it's told from a first-person point of view, which makes it even more intriguing. Um, and I'll just, like I said, I'll read a little bit of the first paragraph. It says, My name is R. It's not much of a name, but someone I love gave it to me. Whatever past lives return to me and whatever other names they bring, this is the one that matters. My first life fled without a fight and left nothing behind, so I doubt it was a loss worth mourning. A man I don't remember mixed genes with a woman I can't recall, and I was called to the stage. I stumbled through the curtain, squinting into the blinding light of the birth canal, and after a brief and banal performance, I died. Now, this is the arc of an average life, unexamined, unremarked, unremarkable, and it should have ended there. So, yeah, it's a continuing story of R as um, his life is sort of coming back to him. And it just, I don't understand why this is not getting much more publicity, because it is such a great story. And this one uh, received so much praise, even made a movie out of it, but this is just sort of sliding under the radar. So, if you enjoyed Warm Bodies, definitely pick it up. And this is going to be part of a series, so there is a planned third book as well. Number three, a new release you haven't read yet. For that, I picked Black Mad Wheel by Josh Mallerman. Uh, this is the author of Bird Box, which is one of my top reads. I think it was for 2016 or maybe 2015. I forgot exactly the date on that. But I absolutely love this book. Such suspense, uh, unknown. You're on the edge of your seat the whole time. So I'm hoping that'll be something along the lines of Mad Black Mad Wheel. The only thing I really know about this particular title is it's about a... A musical band called the Danes. They're made up of uh, ex-army men, and there's some strange music just coming from the African desert, and the army sort of sends this group out into the desert to investigate it, um, and it sort of shifts uh, perspectives back and forth, uh, to, I think, to the past of one of these uh, ex-army men, something that happened to them. It shifts perspectives when he's in a hospital or something. I don't know. I don't really need to know much more about it. I just want to kind of dive into it unknown and see what it's all about. Number four, uh, most anticipated release for the second year, second half of the year. And I really don't tend to look that far in advance. I don't go through catalogs and see what's coming out. It's sort of like when I unpack it, I see it. I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, occasionally I'll hear, you know, things are from Facebook or uh, on YouTube of, of things coming out. But I really haven't heard of anything that I'm definitely looking towards for the coming half. Uh, number five, biggest disappointment. Uh, for that, I picked To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. Um, I'd heard this title bandied about so much all my life, and Virginia Woolf is an author, and I read it, and I just don't even know what the book was about, I'll be quite honest. Um, it's sort of... I Why talk about it? I don't know. I don't know what it was about. I, did, I just didn't get it. I couldn't wait till it was over. Even though it was a very slim novel, it just wasn't for me. Number six, biggest surprise. That would be the book I'm currently reading, which is War and Peace by Tolstoy. Uh, intimidating brick of a book um, with all these Russian names and, you know, just the topic. Uh, um, I just thought I would just be lost, be over my head. Uh, but I am currently on page 456. And I'm loving every minute of it. Uh, I'm following along with the read-along, which is six chapters a day, and I sometimes want to jump ahead because I'm so into the characters now. Uh, at first it was a little overwhelming. There's a nice list of characters at the back of this particular translation, which is by Anthony Briggs in the Penguin Classics edition. But uh, that helps a lot. But once you start getting into it, there's it narrows it down to more um, 
a manageable group of characters, and I'm, I'm just loving it. So, yeah, that was the biggest surprise. Uh, number seven, favorite new author, debut or new to you? For that, I went with Alain Mastai's uh, All Are Wrong Todays. Um, this is his debut novel. Apparently he's written for television and stuff before. Um, but this is sort of a time travel type story, romance within it. Uh, and I was just captivated by it. It had a unique twist on the time travel, which I really liked. Uh, which some things you don't think, you know, it was like you, you get into a time machine, you jump back in time, and you're like in the same spot. But it doesn't work that way when an Earth rotates and moves around the universe. You jump back in time, that Earth might not be in that same spot. And I thought that was really clever. Uh, but yeah, definitely picked that one. And number eight, favorite fictional crush. Never had a real life crush, let alone a fictional crush. Newest favorite character? This was a tough one. Uh, I looked through Goodreads and looked over the books that I had gone through. I mean, Ruby Lennox stands out as a character from uh, Behind the Scenes of the Museum by Kate Atkinson. That was a unique book told from Ruby's point of view from the moment she's conceived throughout her life as she sort of um, reveals aspects of her family and it's a very melancholy story and very humorous. I, I liked her voice within it. She definitely stands out as one character. There's also Maisie Dobbs, uh, Jacqueline Winsbury's character in her self-titled Maisie Dobbs first book. Um, this is a lady who's sort of setting up uh, a business as a private investigator at the beginning of the book, starts investigating a case, and most of that book, though, leads you uh, into her past as a nurse at the front during World War I. So we don't really get a good enough look yet at what this character is going to be within the rest of the series, so it was kind of hard to pick her as well. And then the one that stands out the most, although it's not really new to me, but I'm starting the series over again this year, and that is the Amelia Peabody series. Um, nothing tops Amelia Peabody. She's just a fascinating character. Um, Strong-willed, opinionated, parasol-wielding, Victorian-era fan of Egypt, uh, Egyptology, and um, she has a fascination with it. She travels to Egypt, meets her future husband, Radcliffe Emerson. Together they have a she calls it a catastrophically precocious child, which they nickname Ramses. Uh, don't ever get between her and her family. You threaten her family, she will come after you. Uh, I just love her character. She's um, committed to solving crimes constantly, anything that happens around her. She's a take charge person, uh, but it's her wit that I love the most, and uh, it, her books are just fantastic. Uh, number 10, a book that made you cry. Uh, I have not encountered a book this year that has made me cry. I don't often, but I do occasionally, but nothing this year so far. Book that made you happy, once again, every single Amelia Peabody book that I've read so far, actually audio, I've listened to them on audio so far this year. Number 12, uh, favorite book to film adaptation. Uh, I have not really gone to see any movies that were previously books this year, so I'd have to pass on that one. Number 13, favorite review you've written this year or favorite video you've done? And I haven't done any um, full-length um, book reviews this year uh, so far, but in terms of videos that I have made, I'd have to say the um, book, uh, the, the video where I did the hardback book review. Um, this is a book i get gotten at a little free library, as you can see the stamp there. And literally this whole part of the cover had peeled off. It was only attached by this back area here. And, uh, yeah, I filmed a, a repair job of it, and that's, as you can see, it's still holding up. So I was quite proud of that. I, I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out, even just getting the camera right and everything, and whether it would be successful, um, but it came out really well, and it seemed to be quite well received, so thanks for that. And where are we? Number 14, most beautiful book you've bought or received this year? I haven't received any books. Um, rarely do, actually. My family is just like, oh, you, they don't know what to buy me, so they never buy me books. Um, but in terms of ones that I purchased myself, I'm going to have to go back to the Explorer's Guild. Uh, the artwork in this is just beautiful, this sort of raised lettering in the gold guild there, and all the attention to detail everywhere within this book, even the uh, pages on the inside with the globe, and uh, the sort of antique look to it, the pages have a sort of sepia tone, and the graphic uh, novel part of it and the text. Um, you have we have some nice full color illustrations within it as well. There's another one, or even you know spanning several pages. It's absolutely gorgeous book, well put together, great story, everything about it. I love it. 
Uh, and number 15, which book do you need to read by the end of this year? And this is where I'm going to kind of jump into where the video that I originally planned to do for the middle of the year because there isn't really one book that I need to read, uh, but at the beginning of the year I set uh, reading resolutions, uh, a list of things that I want to try and accomplish during this year. And uh, I've got them all kind of written out here. So one of them was um, a TBR for classics that I like to read. I have a list of 10, which I want to read at least five. And as you can see, I've only gotten one of those so far. And I've been reading classics, but not so many from this list as I'd like to get to. So I definitely need to kind of recommend, um, kind of fix that. The next was uh, I wanted to read at least five ebooks. Um, this page is completely blank, so I need to kind of go through my uh, ebooks and see what I've got and um, try and get something off of that one. The one I'm probably the most successful at right now is uh, my just general TBR list. I had. 10 books out of the books I haven't gotten to yet, and uh, I've managed to get three of those. So you can see I've read The Two Towers, Behind the Scenes at the Museum, and The Explorer's Guild. Um, <laughs> House of Leaves is the scary one, let's say, uh, in more ways than one, um, just because of the format of it. I don't know, I know it's going to be tricky, and I keep putting it off. Um, I definitely uh, want to try and get the Return of the King so I can complete The Lord of the Rings this year. Um, that's that's high on my list and overall on Goodreads um, I think the other day I was behind one book I had read like 44 books but I think that has gotten up to 45 so I believe I'm like right on schedule right now for my hundred books in um, a year so yeah that's my uh, kind of mid-year wrap-up and um, mid-year book freakout tag okay I'm gonna tag Ms. Moffat Cheryl from CR Flames fan and uh, Charlie from Duvet Day Devours. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tag and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.